Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Figure Tech. I am back. Sorry I was gone so long. A lot happened. Went on a cruise for an anniversary trip. Came back with the COVID. Totally shut me down. Uh, it only lasted about a week, but I had this, just this brain fog and this, you know, just lack of energy and I really just couldn't do anything. So I, I didn't even feel like coming up here to record a video. So, uh, but I'm back now and we're going to dive into the latest review. I hope you enjoy it because I'm super excited about it. I got this while I was down with COVID and I just want to say I'm super pumped because here it is. The Blue Beetle and Booster Gold from McFarland Toys. I know a lot of people have already seen this. I've been saving this. So just so I could review these. These are the ultimate figures, the ones that I've wanted McFarland to make for so long. We finally have them. So uh, let's not waste any time. Let's head over to the photo booth, which is actually right behind me because I'm recording from a different place. And let's review these guys. Now that we're in the photo booth, let's take a look at the packaging. The packaging is the same as every other DC Multiverse figure from McFarland Toys. Except for this is a two-pack, but it still it looks the same. The same aesthetics of the black. You know, just a solid black base with the DC Multiverse logo and the name of the figures at the bottom. 12 plus here. I I'm just excited about the figures. I really don't care about the packaging, but I'm going to show it to you anyway because the back is a little cool. Right side of the box. Left side of the box. Top of the box. Bottom of the box with the UPC in case you need to look that up in one of the normal places where you look up toys. And of course the back of the box which features some fantastic artwork from the latest Blue and Gold comic. I know this is from the Blue and Gold series, the newest comic book series featuring the two characters where you got some aliens chasing them in the background. I would love for that classic Kevin Maguire artwork to be on here. It, it, it was just so cool featuring the, the iconic costumes, but I'm just happy to get these figures, so I'm not going to complain all that much because we got freaking Ted Cord and Booster Gold. It's just, you know, I can't say anything else. With that out of the way, let's break these guys open and let's get down to playing. Okay, now that we have them out of the box, let's start off by taking a look at all the accessories and boy, do they come with a ton of accessories. First up, they each come with the single black DC logo base, which is cool because they also come with this humongous base here featuring, I, I don't know, it looks like some alien technology maybe, or maybe inside of the bug. Well, I don't know, with, ha, the bug got blown up pretty quick in that series, uh, spoiler alert. So I, you know, this is probably some alien technology spaceship kind of kind of stuff here that they can stand on, which is pretty cool, but I still prefer the normal black base. They each come with these awesome trading cards, and I love this because it's not a pick of the figure itself. It's actually DC art. This is really cool. Weird though, this is not from the Blue and Gold series. I believe this is from the solo, the newest solo series you know, a few years ago from Booster Gold. And this is, I don't know, this is not from Blue and Gold either. This artwork's from something newer. I can't really tell. If you want to read the bios, here you go. Pause the video and you can check it out for yourself. One of the cool accessories is Skeet. Check this guy out. He's on this, yeah, I don't know what this thing is. It looks like this is a plug, so it's going to fit in somewhere. We'll have to take a look where that actually fits in on Booster. Maybe it's on Booster. Nope, I see it now. It's on the base here. So it just kind of slides into the front of the base. Kind of weird. I mean, why would you want him on the base flying sideways? Not even looking straight on. Just a weird uh, decision there by McFarlane. I'm not going to complain too much because these are my two favorite superheroes in the whole entire world. So, uh, yeah, here is Blue Beetle's BB gun. It is supposed to shoot compressed air, so I don't know why it has this little doohickey here with the beetle, you know, shooting out of it, unless this is like a, a tracer or something, you know, and this is just air or something. Yeah, I don't know. I wish they would have just cut that off and just left the gun by itself. All right, here's some gauntlet uh, power here for Booster Gold. You know, put this on his wrist, and it looks like he's shooting some kind of Ray, throw away piece. Here is a pretty cool piece though. It's a cell phone for Booster Gold. Check that out. Maybe an iPhone, I don't know. But a uh, pretty cool piece here. Uh, you know, it'd be cooler if we had some 
something on here, like some screens or something. Maybe he's like tweeting or whatever. Okay, so enough with the accessories. Let's take a look at the figures. We're going to leave Blue Beetle last because he's obviously my favorite superhero in the world. And we're going to take out Booster Gold first. So here's a close-up of the face for Booster Gold. The, the one critique I have about this is I wish this would have been like a translucent plastic instead of just this where it covers up their eyes completely. I, I think that's the one thing that is wrong with these beautiful action figures is you covered up the eyes and you're supposed to be able to see their eyes. It's not supposed to be, you know, covered like that, which looks a little wonky on the shelf, to be honest. So I'm not all that impressed with with the goggles on either figure. Uh, the paint jobs on these guys are fantastic. Of course, this is a little different than normal. There's no real texture on the suits at all. This is all paint lines. So everything is painted. The costume is painted on there like it would look in the comics. The only real textures you have are the face, the hair, the things on the hands here, maybe a little belt thingy around the boot. That's pretty much it. It's just straight up regular action figure. In fact, uh, if I had to guess, I would say that both of these figures use the same buck with the exception of maybe, you know, a little piece here, a little, the, the hands might be a little bit different. Uh, heads obviously are different, uh, but for the most part, they use the same legs and arms and chest, all that kind of good stuff. Take a look at the back. You can see that looks pretty cool. Although that does look a little wonky there with just the space in between that. I will say that there is this little issue that I've seen. Look at that. It's almost like they didn't go all the way up with the plastic to cover it up. Luckily, the diaper covers that up pretty well. But if you were, you know, playing with him pretty hard, I, I guess that might not work so good. I don't like that the diaper comes down like that. See this little gap there? Looks like he has sagging drawers. Uh, <laughs> the, the way that looks, uh, it's, it's almost like they're forcing you to spread his legs just a hair. So taking a look at the articulation on this guy, Booster Gold has all sorts of movement on his head. He can look up really well, look down really well as well. So he tilts great motion on the head. Arms rotate all the way up, all the way sides. Bicep swivel here. You can see it goes all the way around. Double elbow joints. Wrist articulates all the way around, back and forth. And this is not the classic uh, ball joint that McFarlane usually uses in the wrist, which I'm super happy about. I think I first noticed these on the TV flash that they released not too long ago. Uh, and, well, it's been quite a while now, obviously, but, but I, I dig those joints so much better. Uh, he does twist at the chest, twist at the, the stomach area down here. He could do a very nice split. He could kick back a little bit, not too terribly much. He does have double jointed knees. And of course, he has the patented McFarlane. Well, this is not the ball joint that they usually put in there. So again, that makes the feet, the whole leg look symmetrically, look totally better than the ball joint does. He has the toe articulation that one's kind of stuck. I don't care about the toe articulation, some people do, but you could get some good movement out of this joint as well. It can do all kinds of stuff, but you know, again, I'm not I'm not keen on all those feet joint be joints because they do tend to make the figure not stand properly. All right, taking a look at Blue Beetle, he suffers from the same goggle issue that Booster Gold does. Again, I'm not complaining because I have a freaking Blue Beetle. I mean, anytime I get Ted Cord Blue Beetle action figure, I'm I'm super stoked. So, uh, yeah, did this go all the way to the top of my 2022 action figure list? Yeah, it did. Just because, I mean, it's Ted Cord Blue Beetle. Who wouldn't like him? Uh, we're not going to look at the articulation because he has the same as Booster Gold's articulation. I will say. I'm in love with this action figure. <laughs> oh my God, look at the belt. It looks so awesome. Uh, just, they did such a good job painting the, the little beetle logo on his, on his chest and even the arms, nice attention to detail. There's no like overspray or any of that garbage that sometimes you might see. 
I mean, and, and there's not, it's not like you can, there's a lot to paint on this guy or you really mess him up. The head looks great. The blacks on all the pieces look good. Eh, you got a little bitty tiny issue there. A little bit of overspray of skin tone on the mask there. Nothing I can't fix with a little paint. Obviously, but I probably won't even do that. I'm just so stoked to have this figure. Uh, you know, I'm in love. Between this and the superpowers figures, Mark McFarlane, you you're, you can do no wrong. And also keeping the price down on these guys is just amazing. These guys, honestly, are my two favorite superheroes of all time. And, you know, if you don't get, get why, it, it's because I grew up with the 87 Justice League, the New Beginning, the J.M. DeMatteis, the Keith Giffen, the Kevin McGuire Justice League. It, I don't, it played such a big part in my comic book reading. It was like the first series that I actually read and, and really paid attention to. And I enjoyed it so much, just the comedic value along with the action. And these two characters, even though he didn't come in until like issue four, these two characters were the best part of that series going forward for me. I absolutely loved it, along with Kevin McGuire's artwork, which he is still to this day probably my, my favorite artist. Uh, I, I can't help it that, that it made such an impression on me. So I continue to buy up anything that they're in automatically. So there you have it, folks. A fantastic set from McFarlane, my favorite of 2022 so far. Uh, I, I don't know. I love. They're my favorite heroes. I'm so glad that McFarlane made these figures. I can't wait for more of the Kevin McGuire, J.M. DeMatteis. Keith Giffen, Justice League. I, I, I want more of those figures. Bring on Guy Gardner. Bring on Mr. Miracle, Captain Adam. We have to have them to complete this set. All right, folks, if you like what I'm doing, please hit that subscribe button. That's the best way to help the channel grow. You can check me out at Figure Attack on all my social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all that kind of cool stuff. Check me out at projectactionfigure.com. Write art, news articles, you know, do some reviews, all that kind of good stuff over there. Get the latest toy action figure news at projectactionfigure.com. All right, folks, until next time, God bless.